Hello New Game fans, November has had a share of good games with console launches and more, with a number of tycoon games to make the cut, which is pretty neat. Special mention goes to the perspective puzzle title Super Liminal, which launched on Steam after being an Epic exclusive, which added developer commentary, a challenge mode and even Steam Workshop support, and seems to have done pretty well for itself, which is always nice to see. And with that, we'll move on to the main list. I told you folks that I'm a fan of farming and life sim titles, so of course, Pick on Tier gets on the list. The self-styled slow life RPG has all the elements that you would expect it to, including farming, fishing, mining, raising animals, crafting, light combat, and relationships with villagers, so it's nothing too groundbreaking, but it's still a very pleasant one of these. I adore the look of the game, but the main issue is the early access model, which does cap the content, so I'm looking to spend more time with it once it reaches 1.0. I'm also a fan of mechs, both of the lumbering and agile varieties, so of course, this caught my eye. It's a turn-based tactics game with simultaneous resolution, which does lead to some interesting tactical decisions that you would find in games like Frozen Synapse. I can only hold this for five more seconds. I only need three, two, one, oh, oh, oh. Sweet Max as well, and again, waiting for more content. All local time threads are converging. There's nothing more we can do here. Final time for some shut eye. No. Not today. A graduate of the Steam Early Access program is Slasher's Keep, a wonderful first person roguelite with quite the compelling gameplay loop. It has a great art style, a nice variety of weapons and equipment, as well as RPG mechanics for your character. Although at least initially, it can seem quite punishing with the difficulty and a not so clear cut progression system. I do find first person melee in general to be very clunky, so if you're not a fan as well, do beware, but if you are, this could be of interest to you. Set in the self-titled Bittersweet Apocalypse, this mental has you surviving and finding a way through a zombie apocalypse, but it's not all doom and gloom, with some surprisingly colourful visuals and a good old proven gameplay loop of scavenging, gathering resources and crafting. This feels a lot better than Zelda released in October, so certainly one for survival game fans. Bug Snacks is from the developer of Octodad, so of course there's some whimsy to this title. It's a first person adventure game where you play as a journalist searching for a missing adventurer, having to capture and feed these creatures through the townsfolk. The Pokemon like Bug Snacks are the highlight, with each new discovery being a delight, although one too many palette swaps does take away from the joy of discovery. Still, a very cute and vibrant game which may have a darker secret, but certainly among the best 15 games of the month. I love tycoon games, so of course, Skyhaven gets on the list. I don't remember any such entry from my childhood, where it was primarily Zoo Tycoon that sparked my interest in this genre, but a title that allows you to design and build an airport down to the runway layouts seems like a nice new challenge. There's a whole bunch of management systems, from approving which airlines get to use your airport, various research and upgrade options, as well as managing fuel costs, so it does go pretty in-depth and is not your surface level sim. The 
current version allows you to play through the time period 1916 to 1970, so there's some catching up to do before it gets to the modern age, but a good start for sure. From the clouds they dive, the screams of battle in their lungs. They find each other in the dark embrace of the cold sea. One of the most gorgeous indie games of the month is The Falconeer, a flight sim title that draws from games like Crimson Skies and Panzer Dragoon, and apparently is primarily the work of a solo developer with some help on audio but is mighty impressive. It has you exploring the open world, taking on missions and helping factions, doing battle in the skies and against targets both on land and on sea. While the flight combat is pretty straightforward and you can do stuff like a barrel roll, the most interesting part of this game is the world building which is something that I love in games. Just exploring the locations and learning about the lore of this hauntingly beautiful world is a treat and is a no-brainer title for this video. it meant to get there. How it would change everything. We knew it was our destiny to step foot on Mars. So we didn't let anything stop us. The next tycoon game to make the list is Mars Horizon, a space agency simulator where you need to manage research and construction of your facility and spacecraft in order to get to Mars, participating in a space race against other agencies. Wonderful low poly look and some interesting research options, this is a must get if you're at all curious about space exploration. Have you ever been with a predator before? Well... Well... Small case, we'll wrap it up in no time. What kind of case? The kind of case where if you come with me right now, you're not on duty anymore. What a pleasant surprise. The roaster coppers in person. The noir genre or style is very distinct in the themes that it uses, the vibes it evokes and the visual presentation and a game which captures this beautifully is Chicken Police Paint It Red. Playing as a buddy cop duo drawn into a mystery, it has you exploring the city of Clawville where Predator and Prey live together as you go from one location to the next, gathering clues, interrogating witnesses and pushing the story forward. The anthropomorphic animals are the stars here since it gives the game a very unique slant, being freakishly attached to very human bodies adding another layer of weird which I do appreciate. Beautiful soundtrack and excellent voice acting makes this not to be missed. Not even you can see the world as that black and white. The 9 o'clock show with a glass of cheap bourbon and the red gown with the silent music. I'm tired of a Every day the same. Don't be scared, I'm just really, really, really excited. And it's dead. An amazing city builder entry is Kingdoms Reborn, drawing comparisons to games like Anno, Pharaoh, and Banish having you manage a colony, trying to grow it into a city where the villagers are simulated and has made a great first impression. It's a fairly run-of-the-mill city builder, but it's comfort food for fans of the genre where it's about growing crops, gathering wood and stone and processing these in order to get your people the comforts that they need.
There is, however, multiplayer support with a trading system so that's something new, but it does also have some performance and gameplay issues when your population gets too large. Still, a beautiful looking game making another strong first impression, so looking forward to more from this. The sequel to Dog Kickers, Task Force North swaps the SWAT team for the military, but it's more of that same real-time tactics goodness. Coordinate and plan your approach as you take out a terrorist organization with more missions and unit types to come in early access. You're safe now. Another gorgeous game makes the list with The Pathless an awesome action-adventure title where a hunter and her eagle companion seek to dispel a curse of darkness and to bring back the light. If there's one thing that this game impresses with is the sense of speed as our heroine effortlessly glides through the landscape with a number of mobility options involving the eagle which just makes it feel really good. Not too hot on the stealth sections though, but for how great this looks, definitely give this a shot. I've mentioned Amazing Cultivation Simulator in a Games I Missed video where I said that I was pretty amazed and happy that a colony sim from a Chinese developer using Chinese myths and Chinese styled artwork managed to get as much traction as it did with the 1.0 release and subsequent English language support. Play as a grandmaster and restore your sect back to its former glory by training new disciples, gathering knowledge and expanding your influence through both commerce and political power. Do be wary of legendary creatures and spirits which will attack your home base, so you do need to have the necessary defenses and trained disciples in place. It's a colony sim in the vein of Rimworld and in a similar fashion, can be on the punishing side of things initially, but there are so many complex interacting systems that makes it a joy if you are a fan of the genre. A title which impressed as Sakuna of Rice and Ruin, the long in development action platformer with farming sim elements where you harness the power of rice. Princess, this is no time for a royal nap. Then it shall be so. Lady Sakuna will go hunt, we'll stay here and plant the rice. <laughs> it's not a royal nap. 
Couldn't I at least royally procrastinate until tomorrow? Play as the spoiled harvest goddess banished to an island who has to help the townspeople reclaim it from demons and combines fast-paced action with an interesting management system. It's fine to have a bleeding heart and stuff, but it ain't worth it if we all get killed. I really like the look of this, where the rice farming system is actually your RPG progression, allowing you to literally farm and get your stats up, which makes it an interesting combination. You only ever think of yourself. Kukuroa! Ishimaru, we simply... I knew it. Guys like you aren't worth the air you breathe! I think that developer Edelweiss is primarily a two-person team, which, if true, makes it even more impressive, but do bear in mind that this is quite the pricey title. And of course, Proteus has to feature, since this first-person shooter is bloody gorgeous, capturing the feel of classic Doom with a modern retro look and has all the guns and features that you come to know and love. Of course, there's a shotgun, and Secret Found pops up on the screen when you find one, but fast-paced action that's a real throwback makes this a must-get. The early access version has a 3 to 5 hour long story campaign with more to come, but for nailing how a game like this should feel, it takes the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos and I will see you after the jump.